Welcome to the ephemeral walkthrough. So here we have ephemeral installed, and let's now ramp up the ephemeral UI. Request Docker to be installed and running. It takes a few moments, and then we're good to go. So initially it's empty, as you would expect, no clusters available. So let's create one. Um, and assign a name, decide how many worker nodes we want, which Kubernetes version, timeout, after which the cluster is automatically torn down, and optionally an email address that will be used to notify the uh, owner of the cluster uh, on creation, and again five minutes before the cluster will be destroyed. All right, so we see the cluster ID uh, coming back here. Let's check what's going on under the hood now. So internally in the data plane, Exemplar uses EKS Cuddle on Fargate. And we see here the two um, CloudFormation stacks. The metadata is stored in S3, so it's just a simple JSON file that uh, captures the information we entered early on in the UI. And here the first Cloud Formation stack is coming up. That is the control plane, ETS control plane, and that takes a few minutes until it is available. So we're going to wait, and uh, after some time, we see uh, what is happening there. So let's have a look at uh, the status there. Still creating it's the data from the control plane you're seeing there, and uh, yeah, stuff is getting set up. VPC, submets, etc. All right, so we get a notification cluster is available. This is a heads up. It still takes a few minutes until everything is really um, usable, until we can use Kubecuddle to uh, actually do something with your cluster. So, in the meantime, um, anything between 10 and 15 minutes overall, end to end. Um, Gotta wait, and now the data plane is coming up. The auto scaling group is the second cloud formation stack that ETS Cuddle is ramping up for us. Again, a little patience until everything is up and running. And at some point in time, we should see both stacks completed. Let's check. Yep. Control plane, the EKS control plane is up, so now we have access to the cluster and we should actually see that in the UI. We can now have a look um, at the cluster details. We see everything here um, as we specified in some sort of cluster summary. Uh, you can get more details um, directly from the EKS console. convenient link there takes you directly to the case console. Now, if you want to use that cluster, you need to configure your Kubernetes. There is a command there. Just copy and paste that, execute it locally in your environment, and you're good to go. So let's do that. Confirming that. Yep, conflict is set. So now we should be able to do a Kubernetes get nodes. Nodes might not be ready yet. Yep, they're not ready yet. So let's check back. In the cloud formation console where we are at. Okay, notebook is ready, that is screen group is ready, so now we do that again. We should see anything. Alright, so what version do we have here just to confirm? Also through a cube cut version. And if we have a 1.13 cluster. Cool. Now um, we set it for 400 minutes with the overall time out. It can prolong the time. I just did that in the UI by adding 30 minutes. And now, and now I'm switching over to the um, command line. Um, the reason being that I want to show you that we can also set negative times, essentially, um, yeah, making the cluster go away earlier. So let's subtract 400 minutes and um, you should see that uh, yeah, the cluster. Now only has 40 minutes left to live. 
and, uh, and again let's do it again just for the, the giggles let's uh, get it down to eight minutes so let's subtract six minutes here and we should see eight minutes and now we're already pretty close to being informed that the cluster will be turned up very very soon so let's check that the uh, one of the kiss um, ephemeral um, lambda functions is the destroy function essentially every five minutes triggered by a cloud watch event checks uh, the remaining uh, lifetime the TTL um, against the timeout and here we see um, what is going on so we are pretty close to uh, yeah, receiving an email telling us this cluster will go away so we could prolong that if we need to cluster around longer or simply what the channel will do is work and, and get rid of the cluster head. So here's the, the warning. Hey, got five minutes left. In effect, it is a bit longer because the, the cloud watch event is, is uh, every every five minutes, so you have actually more than five minutes. But uh, don't rely on that. So uh, if you want to prolong the cluster, now is a good time if you receive that email. Otherwise, um, yeah, some five minutes later. Uh, the destroy function actually does its job. But, uh, first, removes the uh, node group uh, cloud formation stack, uh, deletes that one, and when that is done, uh, the next turn um, it removes the control plane, the stack that uh, stays just as the control plane, and uh, the last step it removes the metadata in the S3 bucket, and with that the cluster is gone. Good. Right, one more. And uh, with that, the cluster is gone. All right. And now, time for you to. Um, Check out Xfemoral. I have a look at it. Simple install, single command, pulls everything in. Uh, for the UI, as I said, we need Docker running. Um, have fun with ephemeral clusters uh, on Amazon EKS. Thank you.